I look at people fatter than me, uh, and I go, I'm not them. Uh, and I look at people drunker than me, I go, I'm not them. Uh, and I look at people less money than me, I go, I'm not them. Uh, so I'm in a good little semicircle that I'm in where I go, let's just figure out how we can keep doing what we're doing. I think it went too far. I mean far. this with respect, but where can you find people fatter than you? <laughs> <laughs> Are you at the circus, <laughs> or is it like a... Carnivals. The county I fair yeah, must but have. They, but they can exhibit of something. Because they deep yeah. fry yeah. Snickers bars. <laughs> How long have you guys known each other? 96. 95. 95? Well. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, you were on to me early. Like, yeah. A little early. Oh, yeah, that's true. Maybe 94. I used to do the radio and, and the character on the radio. He liked the character. Mr. Bertram. Yeah. You looking for something, Stace? Yeah. So we're in on 30 years, dude. 30, 30 years? years? Fuck. Yeah. I love how great would it... I mean, like, it's so... What, you need to change the mic? Uh, Adam's transmitter. Just need to what? Check. I don't know. How would... What, was, what are you saying? I mean, it's crazy to me that, like, there are kids that don't know Loveline the way we knew Loveline. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, like, the fuck... The, how great they don't know radio at, at all at all yeah but there is this weird group we're listening to old love lines all of a sudden which is all of weird, a sudden but you know my big kids, deal. kids while well, they all watch friends yeah. you know four years ago oh, my kids like, just started watching the office in the office yeah. in friend and uh, friends office and in love life <laughs> no what was the other one the friends office yeah that my they all went through the office they all went through friends there's another TV show, but I can't think of it. Do you, you ever watch anyone on podcasts where you go, big podcasters, like people that have popped, like Theo right now is having a minute where like everything he says is going viral. Mm -hmm. Do you ever look at like Theo or Tim Dillon or even Rogan and think they would have been good at radio or think like, I look at Rogan and go, I mean this respectfully, he would have been horrible at radio. Yeah, he doesn't have the right rhythm. He Tim would have Radio had a lot of rules. Yeah. And and radio was all about repetition. Yeah. You just had to have like, tons and yeah. tons, and yeah. it, it was a slightly unnatural. It's like films from the fifties. Like, is that acting or is that okay, hey, Bob? I don't tell you. <laughs> 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 and, and there was you know wearing a tuxedo and a gown, and there was talking a million miles an hour, and like no one's going like, oh Jesus, you know, because that kicked in later. Radio, that's how kind of radio was, and if you're good at radio, it's like saying you're a good actor in the fifties. Yeah. It meant yeah. you memorize all your line and you spat it you, you know, hit the, what is it hitting the post hitting the post podcasting is about hanging out yeah podcasting yeah. yeah. so it's really about form. i think it's about being i really think it's about being a fan of someone's yeah because you i think out, that's you when you get your best podcast you hang out them, yeah. like when you see like and i only use rogan because he's like the guy i listen to the most but when you see rogan or even you like when you have like fitzsimmons in or someone that you love that those are great shows joe coy like those yeah. are great shows yeah i i i agree it's 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 a it's a it's a dynamic and sort of a tennis match versus radio was like you sit there I'll talk at you for a little bit and then you plug your shit and you talk back at me but it wasn't that kind of dy dynamic where you're literally freestyling together. And some people would know? sort of sit back and just watch us do the show. It's like they were listening, like they were used to listening, and so they just kind of sit and listen oh, yeah. while we were doing it. Remember those guests? Yeah, yeah, I do English bands. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. for them they get it was pissed. Yeah, but the, the time clock was all screwed up, yeah, and they yeah. were drunk. And they just <laughs> uh, brand new episode of Something's Burning. It is an honor to sit with the original, the OGs of Loveline, two lifelong friends that I am lucky enough to call peers. I never thought it would happen in my entire fucking life. Drew Pinsky, Adam Carolla. Uh, yeah, man. Thank you guys for doing this. I mean, Our you guys know silly. how much you guys. Do you know how, how like how much your approval means to guys like me? Well, we haven't signed off on this shit yet. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll see how it goes. Yeah, it's good. We're making Chilean sea bass. I love it. On a bed of spinach with a with a little bit of fed and pine nuts. Awesome. Healthy keto, which we are definitely talking about in a second. I love it. I love it. Uh, but but this But you know Chilean sea bass, there really is no such thing. It's a Patagonian monkfish. There you go. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. They just, the restaurant sort of invented that for various white fishes, but uh, oh. they're good. They used to, you know how they used to fish with them? They used to have to send a scientist down. Anyone that hunted for, 
for what they call Chilean sea bass, had to have a scientist on board, like some 22-year-old kid <laughs> on a fucking, fucking chug boat. Really? And just, yeah, I just watched, listen to a documentary on not listen to a podcast. Do you know that the actress Minnie Driver's real name is Gertrude Fagenbaum? <laughs> No. As God, long as we're ruining I, I shit know. for everybody, <laughs> let's just keep going. Because I can play this game. I can play it all day, Bert. You know, Walt Disney was a Nazi, right? <laughs> <laughs> I really take some fun out of those parades. Uh, I know. <laughs> and Henry Ford. Oh, my God. <laughs> the Coors family. <laughs> Everything is wrong. So that's a monkfish? That is. Oh, yeah, man. yeah these are, are big pieces. Yeah. Now, now you hear people starting to bring back monkfish, like yeah. the like the fine French restaurant stuff when it's serve you monkfish. Oh, the I went to Gelson's today, uh, and uh this guy Eswin, the butcher back there, said, I knew you were coming. I knew you were coming. I got stuff in the back for you. Oh I wow. said, Yeah, because I because well, yeah. And so he said he's a fan of the cooking, she's a fan of the show, and he said, What are you who are you cooking for? I said, Dr. Drew and Adam Kroll, and he lit up, and he goes, I got you. He went in the back, and he pulled this out. They wow. didn't have it out front. He gave me five pieces. He goes, nice. send wow. the bone with one. And wow. I'm wow. like, oh, in. Yeah, so awesome. shout out to S when I said, and then I got recognized by a homeless guy. Oh, yeah. I've was, had that happen. <laughs> For real? Yeah. It's yeah. Just- it's kind of funny. Yeah, we were like, how did you find and me? And where'd you right. get cable and what happened? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was the, I grew up right around there, yeah. right? And that's the market we could never afford, but I would go in there and steal turkey drumsticks. Was it a Gelson's then? Yeah, yeah it was yeah. pre-cooked and it was in the back and I'd steal whole drumsticks and just eat wow. them in the alley on the side. When he was a starving child. Yeah. Well, that, that, that's, that was a cool, I, I, I overshare, I overshare. <laughs> but like, one of the coolest things is, you know, I, I, got, I get to meet Adam, I do his show one time, and we have a good thing, and he goes, uh, what are you doing? I, I thought we were drinking Mangria. And I, so I didn't drive, I was like, we're gonna drink Mangria, and he's like, yeah, no, I got shit to do. I was like, oh, I don't mind that either. We do the show, it's fun as fuck, and he goes, what are you doing? I said, I'm waiting for a ride, and he goes, I'll drive you home. He's like, where do you live? I tell him, and he goes, oh, I grew up around there. And as we pull up to my house, he goes, you mind if we stop by my old house? And I'm like, I'm like, it's kind of cool because you're doing a star tour with the guy who grew up there. And then he goes, and then he drives me by his house, which had been redone, but I knew the house. I knew the house. Your mom's and then house? all the old stories that you had told on podcasts, I went, ah, that porch. Yeah. That fence. Shut the fuck up. And I was like, it was, I mean, I don't think I've driven a person by that redo, that remodel, and say, you know, that's where Adam Corolla grew up. And they're like, his parents rich? I go, they fucking redid the house. They, <laughs> yeah. they took Rebel a bulldozer to it. it. They took yeah. a bulldozer to it. Yeah, it was it was crazy. Yeah, I just said that my mom uh, died about a, a year ago, and I didn't, we didn't, you know, I wasn't a huge fan, but somebody <laughs> said to me, off the pot. <laughs> I said, my whole family was Neptune Society. Yeah. You know, you pay 50 bucks and yeah. they come pick you up. It, it's, it's a crazy, for atheists who don't have money, you join the Neptune Society, very low cost burials. Uh, they just, just put you they grab you, they cremate you, and they throw you throw the ashes in the ocean. Yeah. And my mom went even cheaper. Oh. She, <laughs> she donated her body to UCLA. Oh, oh boy. And someone said, she donated her body to UCLA? And I said, yeah, they wanted to study moms who didn't love their sons. <laughs> <laughs> But that means a medical student probably dissected her. Or did worse. <laughs> or did worse. <laughs> I mean, Can you imagine what you'd do with a famous person? Oh. All the fucking shit. Set him up as a fucking a center and get behind him. Oh, that my one of one of my favorite early horrible jokes was um Thomas Noguchi was a famous coroner in LA from you know Thomas Noguchi. Yeah, from like nineteen fifty five to nineteen eighty two or something. Like a long long run as a coroner. Screwed up all the autopsies on all the celebrities that died. What? But oh yeah. Everyone was fucked up. The joke was who was the last person to fuck Marilyn Monroe? (laughs) (laughs) Thomas Noguchi. (laughs) That's a great joke, right? That's a great <laughs> joke. Depends what you're into. <laughs> oh my god! Do you guys? Yeah, he you... messed up all the autopsies. All For real? The, all I, I was just watching a documentary about uh, what's her name that died in the ocean. Her husband was on the ship with her. Nat- Natalie, Natalie Woods. Wood. And uh, they're like, well, here, you know, she was on some medication. They flashed the card up, and I froze it, and I took a picture of it, and enlarged it. 
Like, holy fuck, it's amazing she could breathe. She was on so much shit. Right. No wonder yeah. she passed out. I mean, she was a Dalmain and Talwin and oh, just one thing, one opiate and one uh, narcotic after another. And it was like, oh, well, that's when she stopped breathing with the alcohol and the water and the course. No, he put it as a you know, head injury or something. It was, Speaking of toxicology, do you guys want anything to drink? Are you guys go with water? Do you want wine? Do you like a cocktail? Would you like a beer? I'll drink a little, a little wine. Yeah, we just got back from Bordeaux, France. Don't, Bordeaux, don't France. give me that much. Give me about half that much. I'll give. Okay. I, I, I'm a lightweight. Yeah. Oh, I need you to sam. I need you to sniff my. Uh, s- Thank you. Oh, please, thank thank you. you. You get Drew drunk and he starts talking shit about Thomas Noguchi. And we don't want to we don't want to go there. He's got a lot to say about the man. Drew, is this lemon pepper going to be okay for you on flavor? It's fine. Yeah. I swear to God when I say this Lowry's lemon pepper is the mm, best seasoning you can put on good. this. It is so good. That's what I I don't miss. Oh, that's good. Any booze at this moment? Wine. But wine is and wine's the worst fucking for you. With, if you're dieting. Yeah, if you're dieting. Yeah. It's so fucking high in sugar. They My cardiologist Especially told me just red. to bring mall back. Yeah, or white. Yeah, oh, white. Oh, yeah, sorry. Are, uh, <laughs> champ, champagne is actually pretty good for the diet, or better really? for the diet. Yeah, I looked it up once, and champagne is much anything, better than Anything than, than the red white wine. can, you're better. Yeah. Really? Mm-hmm. Um, I have not had nothing but water. Nothing but water. No. In, for a month. No teas. Or you are in of extremes, dude. How yeah, that's you, really good. Can you maintain this? No. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> How the fuck to maintain this? A Mormon has a hard time maintaining. This. All right. So what's the plan? I don't know. All right. We'll figure it out. Today, I mean, today you're so. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Don't say it like that. That's depressing. The um. Here's the thing. Is that I know I'll die one day. <laughs> so what? Fuck it. Like what? Do you, like, yeah. Maybe I get hit by a car. Who cares? Right. Fuck it. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to follow your theory. I, I don't know. Time. I just it's I'm not gonna fucking over I'm not gonna stress about it. Okay. I said to myself, like, you know, I look at people fatter than me uh-huh. and I go, I'm not them. Uh-huh. And I look at people drunker than me, I go, I'm not them. Mm. And I look at people less money than me, I go, I'm not them. Mm. So I'm in a good little semicircle that I'm in where I go, let's just figure out how we can keep doing what we're doing. I think it went too far. I I mean this with respect, but where can you find people fatter than you? (laughs) (laughs) Are you at the circus or (laughs) is it like a... Carnivals. The county I fair yeah, must but have. But they can exhibit of something. Because they deep yeah. fry yeah. Snickers bars. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> deep fry Snickers bars. They do. You hang around the Southwest Terminal in Burbank. <laughs> <laughs> Who's sitting next to Adam? <laughs> next time he goes to Vegas, <laughs> you'd be shocked. No, I don't know. I don't know what the plan is. I don't have a plan really. Like you, sp- like. I like that, by the yeah. way. Every, everyone I know yeah. with a plan yeah. has managed to fuck it up. Yeah, right. Like no, the plan right. is sort of head down, moving forward, yeah. you know, self mastery, just knowing, like, hey, I can do this. Yeah. Oh, I can also smoke pot. So, like, so I got that going for me. <laughs> right? I, I think just, you do. I, yeah. I was sort of responding to the zone thing you were talking about. Oh, yeah. yeah because yeah. the zone sounded like you were planning. Your your escape. Getting back to stealing cooked turkey drumsticks yeah. from the Gelson's Deli department. Yeah. yeah. I, I always grew up so poor with no food and no anything that now I have all the money in the world to eat whatever, whenever, and it's some weird deal with the devil torture where it's like now there's no barrier to entry everything's open i have all the money i need and i sit there and have to do battle with myself all day long like and people are bringing you something you're coming to town we got the best pulled pork in the nation we'll bring it but we'll bring it to the back station you're going Free food, free food. I'm I'm nine years old and going insane. You know? And he can't leave anything behind. Ooh, I can't I got waste that. I got that. I got, you got that. that. I got that hardcore. You, I, got that I don't hardcore. think you beat what I did recently, but give it a let me hear. You give it a try. All right. Grew up with empty cupboards. Uh, so poor we couldn't even call them cabinets. <laughs> <laughs> they were not cabinets. I've they seen were pictures. cupboards. They yeah. were cupboards. Yeah. yeah. And with family that was like. You know, the Tupperware was a big ticket item. You'd have like a mayonnaise jar that they rinsed out, and they go, "We could keep it in the mayonnaise jar." And that, that's like mentality: waste, waste, yeah. waste. I could, I couldn't deal couldn't with wait, it. Couldn't waste anything. And so every time we go out to dinner, 
of course, it's doggy bag. Like people are like, I'm done. It's half. I'm like, that's half a pork chop. Let's yeah. go. Pig gave its life, you know. And but then <laughs> I started going life. on the road and like traveling stuff. And I noticed myself at a steakhouse in Chicago. Oh, yeah. And there's half a T-bone. And I'm like, I think I'm bringing that back to L.A. Uh, <laughs> was, <laughs> all right. Here's the here's the biggest one. Uh, the Hamptons. About two months ago at the Hamptons. Uh, Four, three-hour drive out of New York, maybe. Uh, three hours, three, three hours. You're all the way to Southampton. Do Indian hours. food. Oh. Oh. Staying at a place at the Hamptons, going back to New York to stay, or uh, the podcast well, with place. Drew. Yeah, yeah, your place. Right. Yeah, yeah. And then going back to L.A. on a private jet with Mark Garagos. And I'm like, I'm taking the Indian food. And they're like, <laughs> okay. What are we going to do with the Indian food? You're going from the Hamptons <laughs> to New York, then from New York to LaGuardia, then LaGuardia to Van Nuys Airport, then from Van Nuys Airport to Malibu. That's where the fridge is. So I was like, well, they'll have a mini fridge at the, the Hamptons <laughs> place. I took it back, put it in the mini fridge, got it up the next morning, uh, took it four yeah, hours. I feel like you had it in our place. Yeah, I did because yeah. when I got to Drew's house, he's got a fridge. <laughs> like, go shove it in Drew's fridge. I'm like, well, what's this that? is a, a, Indian food last night. eleven dollars worth of curry. Right, <laughs> bring it back, put it in Drew's thing. Yeah. Stuff starts leaking, by the way, and the bag got all fucked up because yeah. it got hot and stuff. Yeah. Shoved, shoved it in my backpack because I had to hide it because it's like a disease, you know. Yeah. Got on the private jet yeah. with Indian food. Back to Van Nuys at you know four in the morning and drove to Malibu right back. Ate it the next day. That the pilgrimage of that Indian food. What have you done? Uh, so I do a thing called pocket sandwiches, yeah. where if I get if there's leftovers or if we're at usually if we're at an airport, I will make a sandwich with whatever breakfast stuff they have here. Wrap it in napkins, put it in my pocket, and then travel with it. And then a couple days later, we'll find it in my backpack. Oh right. Fuck, I forgot my pocket sandwich. Can I smoke a joint for yeah, you guys? Sure. We won't well, judge. Drew, uh, I rolled a joint and everything. Yeah. I had a I've got a weed story to tell you. Tell me. Yeah. I was at uh, a very famous person's house who smokes a lot of weed. And so we're driving in, I go, Susan, we're gonna I'm gonna have to smoke weed tonight. I, I, I you know, if I'm gonna be one of the cool kids, I uh, I'm gonna have to do this. Come on. I mean it's it's those guys. Yeah. And they're, you know, doing their thing. They were just going nuts on these on these Looked like cigars, these huge things. And I thought, well, yeah, how bad could it be? So, of course, they come to me and I go, I take two hits. And I proceed, have I told you the story? Oh, yeah. I proceed to have a fucking toxic reaction. I develop what's called an anticholinergic delirium. I look like I have Parkinson's disease. As I light I, a fucking uh, joint. Uh, you yeah, story? I know. Is this yeah, a thing I that I am prepares our food? Yeah. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ, true. And, and, I, I, and I was like, I go over to my wife, she goes, sit down. I go, I can't. I couldn't, I couldn't navigate sitting. It was crazy. And uh, so I went outside and I, I'm sort of pacing out there. I'm, I'm getting all, I've got dry mouth. Yeah, I got this away from you, Jesus. Sorry. Got dry mouth, I got photophobia. I'm a photophobia. pussy, I'm not that big of a pussy. What's photophobia? You, the, the, even though I was outside. You hate, it, oh, sorry, go ahead. It, it was, uh, pictures of the yeah. Civil War? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, a, I'm a hater of pictures. Uh, <laughs> no, it's uh, light, light gets, you know, you can't tolerate light. And so even his yard, his yard lights were like too bright for me. And I was disorganized and I knew, and I felt like I was going to have a seizure. And I thought, and I know out. this particular syndrome can cause a seizure. I looked it up afterwards, and apparently people over 65, it's dramatically increased ER visits for this particular reaction. Oh, thank God. And, Tell uh, me that at the beginning. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, but Drew is a lightweight. You're like the, I'm a you're like the guy yeah. in an orgy who's like, doesn't this feel like rape? <laughs> you're like, <laughs> is that, I mean, I'm just asking. Oh, you're cool with this, right? <laughs> Shut the fuck up, man. But, She's going to fuck all of us. But listen, <laughs> listen, listen how bad this guy. All right, right, this goes in the oven yeah. at 425 yeah. for 25 minutes. So it's just it olive oil at the bottom. A little olive oil and, just and with lemon stick. salt. And lemon, this fucking Lowry's lemon pepper is so goddamn I, I, good. I love simple on fish. It's simple so simple. good. Yeah. It's so good. Keep going, Drew. So I'm out there, and I, I'm, you know, I, I didn't have any panic. 
I definitely wasn't high. I was just miserable, but I had no anxiety. It was weird. Oh. I, was like, I was taking full account of things. It was weird, unlike me, right? I was taking full account of things. I go, oh, fuck, this is an anticholinergic delirium. I, it's going to last about three hours. I guess if you're a doctor and you start having a weird reaction, you don't. Have, you can just consult yourself. Well, you, you well, or you can go nutty with it if you think it's something, you know, you think about the worst things sometimes. Yeah. So I'm, I'm out there and I figure, uh, you know, if I can just get through a couple hours, my wife's in the party, I go have a good time, you know. And she comes out and checks on me a couple times. After a while, she comes out and I go, all right, how long has it been now? I figured she was going to say like an hour and a half. She goes like eight minutes, 10 minutes. I was like, oh shit, we got to get out of here. And I was sick for five days. I From couldn't, weed. I, I could not drive for five days. That's crazy. Yeah, it was really wild. I don't smoke enough, I think, to get that. I smoke You're not such old a small enough. amount it's of weed a... when I smoke. And I just smoke to feel empathy. This is a... <laughs> This is a toxic reaction. I, I had a specific thing. You know. I was thinking about uh, when you're talking about the orgy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I, I, you ever see those gangbang films? Yeah. And <laughs> it just got me to think about that. I the ones that's where so the, creepy. The ones yeah, where they yeah. like line up a thousand guys and try to yeah, make a record. Yeah, but, but okay. So this is a good point because okay. they try to set the record, right? Yeah. But they can never assemble 700 cocks. So what they do is they get 150 guys <laughs> and they do a, they do rounds, right? And I'm like. I'm not involved with the sanctioning body, but that's not a gangbang record. It has to be 750 yeah. new yeah, yeah. and strange cocks, right? The guy goes in with a mustache and he goes, hey, I'm a new to the city. What's happening here, huh? Uh, yeah, cheerio. But whenever I see the guy who's fifth in line, I like that guy because the guy who's fifth in line isn't masturbating, but he's trying to keep the blood flowing, <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I always think that guy's doing the equivalent to masturbating as the people who are jogging and miss the light. And they stand on the, they're not running, but they're still they're kind of, yeah. they're kind of doing the, going, the, the, the motion. The, the motion is the same, yeah. but they're not looking for the outcome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I would never, I never understand the gangbang, like that trophy on your mantle of yeah. like 750 guys. Did, I go, we, you have herpes. You didn't we have, have one of these online? Right. Right. Didn't we have one of those women online? Yeah. Like, yeah, it would be like funny, like if then she then became a born again Christian and oh. met her new husband yeah. and they were kind of talking about their past. And she's like, look, I only had sex one day in my life. And he's like, oh my God, you're practically a virgin. Hold on, hear me out, hear me out. <laughs> We're trying to set a record. <laughs> He's like, please let it be for how fast the guy was. <laughs> God, I never, uh, I never, I don't understand that. I don't understand glory holes. Mm, yeah. Like glory holes, like I, there's a, uh, I'll edit his name out if he wants me to, but he was explaining. He's like, has sex with is guys he, and is, girls. He's gay, okay. Well, I, I, either that or he's really trustworthy. Well, that's, what, that's what Adam calls half mo. Yeah. Yeah, not homo. Not yeah. Right. Half, half mo. He yeah. he will put his dick in glory holes, so trustworthy, and see what happens. Oh really? Yeah. I, I will do the glory hole <laughs> on occasion and my problem isn't with the morality of it. It's the thickness of the plywood they use for the glory hole. <laughs> if you do quarter inch, three eighths, five sixteenths, I'm there all day long. You go to like Inch and a half, CDX, struck side. one, good one side. <laughs> <laughs> That's d diminishing, you know what I mean? And then you have to get into that explanation. And it's always weird talking to someone through the glory hole. Like, this is really thick ply. I don't know if you were able to examine the hole or throw tape on it before I put my cock through it. There's usually a lot more cock here. There's a place down the street that does quarter inch CDX ply. Uh, there's sheetrock on my side. <laughs> All right. Oh, they skinned it with sheetrock? Oh, no wonder we're having this conversation five eighths or half off they mudden tape it too because between the let's say five inch obviously you have to have a fire rating so it's a five inch sheet rock five inch sheet rock doubled up cdx three quarter good one side then we're already talking about two two and eight two that's and eight. already so we're already cutting into my <laughs> glory hole, com glory hole oh, conversation i just can't imagine having my face against plywood like that like, mm. like, it's so uncomfortable. With the glory hole? Yeah, just to be up against plywood. Because I couldn't, I don't know, my, well, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. 
You could, you could put it in like this and just sit back. <laughs> you, could, you could lean back. Oh, my God. Can I tell you about an idea that I think would just kind of revolutionize society? Oh, here we and go. I think this is the time to do it. I've, I've talked about it on my podcast before, but it, this reminded me. <clears throat> All right. I wanted to have a nationwide competition for the guy with the biggest hog, okay. right? Yeah. Oh. And the only way we can really scientifically do it is through water displacement. Right. It's because volume. that's volume. Yeah. That's yeah. length okay, and that's, girth. Okay, right? that's the yep. biggest dick. Right. And so once a year, every American male would lay down on a sheet of, you know, very thin titanium, put the hog through the hole, goes into the graduated cylinder, as much as displaced, that's what we have. Oh, and so then and so then you almost have like like a measuring cup, like Oh, let me see if I got this correct. So, <laughs> yeah. Hold on. I got this. This is a fucking great idea. And by the way, this was rehearsed because I brought the measuring cup. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, right. So every every man's dick enters a bowl. Right. It's uh, graduated. Uh, uh, right. Graduated. And so then right there you go. So that's the top. And then you put your dick in. Right. No, you don't. This place is water. Yeah. yeah. Yes, and then, and then you they pull go, it out. And your go, dick is right. 500. This, this is the volume of your hog. Fuck. It's all done through the same sheet, same thickness. It's all regulated. Balls, just dick. Just dick. Okay. Otherwise, I'd be sitting pretty. <laughs> Me and you. <laughs> so then on 4th of July, right after the Nathan's <laughs> hot dog eating competition, we announced the winner. Of the of the America's biggest dick. Right. And this guy comes out. I mean, he's presented. It's basically Evil Knievel's jumpsuit. Yeah. Big number one, you know, <laughs> on the back. But here's the here's the part that's interesting. Right. Everybody gets a number. So uh, there are, you know, 122 million males uh, over the age of 18. Ooh. You're getting a ranking. Ooh. And and this day. Everyone's got to wear their windbreaker <laughs> with their ranking on the bottom. Now, the ranking isn't your size, your girth, or it's how we're going from one. Anyone in the top 10 is drinking for free that day, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, right? Yeah. There's no one. They're not paying for their own beer when they walk into, oh, uh, walk into TGI brilliant. Fridays. First off, you'd be a celebrity. Anyone who was in the top five would be, you know, on yeah. every podcast and every late night show and whatever. <laughs> every year, there's 18 year olds. There's there's 15 million men turning 18. So we'd have you don't and you just get that in, crown. And we're forever. losing dudes every year. Yeah, yeah. you got to defend the crown. Huh? You know what I mean? Every couple but years. if you're in the bottom 10, percent oh. uh, you got to walk around with that windbreaker, and that windbreaker it's is going to have a, it's got a, number a lot it. of digits. On, so on that, that, that guy can go uh, sort of establish the international competition. Oh. Maybe go somewhere. You where... know, a lot of people are, are like, well, what woman is going to be? But you know, that guy can eat pussy <laughs> like a fucking champ, right? Well, so yeah. I'm saying, if I'm a woman, I'm like, you know what? I'm going for a lower number. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I heard the right. guys with big dicks don't have as much fun because they can't get it all in. Mm. So they just get their head in, and it's not like great sex, and it's painful for the woman, so they don't want to do it. We have a friend who has a really big dick, mm -hmm. and his chick's like, yeah, I can't. It's, I mean, it's not like pleasurable. But like, he can't get it all in, so he's never, like, I've been lucky enough to have my entire dick inside someone. <laughs> mm. And then some. Yeah. <laughs> like, I've had, it, I've had pussy around my pubis at times. So, I, like. I just want, my thing, the dick I wanted. <laughs> It's gonna be the name of my memoirs. <laughs> the dick I wanted. Okay, first things first. I did not want the dick where when I sit on the toilet and I'm Hits taking a dump, squirts out oh. straight ahead. I okay, did not the that's one the that, small dick the I, one I've, that, I've had that guy before. Yes, where you piss in your underwear? Not affected by gravity. Not a good, not a good sign for a dick. I wanted the one that dropped into the water and actually sucked some water out of the tank. You know, it's like just you go into the bathroom, no, I'm topping off. But I just want the dick I want, and I'm not getting greedy. Okay. I just want the dick yeah. where I get to hold the base. Oh. And there's still enough to kind that of work cool. now, kind of enough to would, work now, with. Does it you know? have to be the whole fist or maybe a couple of fingers, then? I don't want it like an Englishman drinking tea. Right. You, you know what I mean? I want, a, yeah. I want a full fisted <laughs> yeah. American. You know, I just love, I could yeah. grab with a fist and guide it somewhere yeah. or do something with it and not be like a baseball bat when you're saying who's up first. You know what I mean? I've been trying to work on a joke for a while now about 
the day I realized I didn't have a big dick. Mm. I was at swim camp at Carrollwood, and we were getting changed to go from swimming to tennis. And I took my pants off, and this one dude had a big dick. And I went, oh. And I looked at mine like, like, how come that, like, just like a weird moment. And then I was like, I'm sure it just gets that big. Like, just, he's, you know, it gets bigger. And then it didn't. And then I just was like, wow. And then ninth grade, I had like a head case about it. And I went into the showers and I saw dudes, like men, 18 year old men with hair and dicks and fucking black dicks and like Cuban dicks, uncircumcised dicks. And I had a fucking panic attack. You sound like a used dick salesman. I got, we got black, cute. Yeah. We got uncut. We got black. We got cute. Come on, Dad. We're stealing days. <laughs> oh, this is going to be fucking good. When I started, I don't know how many people know this, but when I started, I started on a show that was derived basically off the man show. It was completely stolen from the man show. It was the man show was pitched around town, and everyone wanted it. Not everyone could get it. FX really wanted it. And oh, they that lost show. it. Oh, and so yeah. they made a show called The X Show. Oh, yeah. Which, oh, yeah. yeah right, which right. I end up, I was one of the hosts. Oh, yeah. But right. you would, but you would, I was the second round of hosts. I wasn't the first round. With uh, DiCarlo was in that one. John DiCarlo was on it. Uh, Craig J. Jackson. And then me and Gary Valentine ended up replacing two guys, John Weber. And, uh, but like you and Jimmy, I remember watching you guys together and thinking, God, and like you guys were just fucking money. I mean, crank anchors like everything you guys did and then and then i was like and then when jimmy went to television and you guys kind of went off it was kind of like still the perfect fucking storm you guys were so fucking titans you were the podcast guy he was late night and i was like i was like i always wondered how much influence they had on each other how much they called each other to be like you know they're offering me this late night talk show should i do it or or like how different how separate you guys really because you guys really went off in two different directions, but probably the two, I don't think you guys, I don't know if you guys knew this at the time, but the two most lucrative directions. Yeah. Uh, Jimmy's a super generous guy and a super nice guy, and he's like a super hardworking and focused guy. And we have these really dissimilar backgrounds, but he thought I was funny. And I thought he was funny. And and it was really our kind of relationship was built on a, a mutual respect mm-hmm. and, and a respect for sort of ability. Because I'd been banging around for 10 years and no one thought I was funny. Uh, but when I met Jimmy, he was like, oh, you're funny. And we should, we should do something together. And I, I felt the exact same way about him. Now, part of it is sort of like, in terms of the relationship where people talk about, like sometimes people will gently say to me like, oh, Jimmy's had so much success on the yeah, late night yeah, show. Is yeah. that something you think about? You know, and I go, yeah, I'm happy for him. And they go, yeah, but in the in the quiet moments, it has oh, to be. Oh, they have to do that. They do that. You know a question I had asked? Who makes more money, you or Tom? Right, right. They have to, and I'm like, I'm super happy for Jimmy, and when he's going to host the Oscars, I'll, I'll write for him, and I'll be happy to be a part of it. And, you know, you better adopt that attitude early and often, because yeah. show business is nothing but that. It's just people that were nobody when you were somebody, and now they're somebody, and you're half a somebody. <laughs> and, 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 and everyone goes, oh, I remember we used to walk to the airport, and no one would even recognize Jimmy. I was the one who was being, you know, yeah. stopped. So you, you have to really get over that mindset yeah. Yeah. super early. And if you bring that into a relationship, it, 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 it is poison because it is impossible for each party of the relationship to advance or retard at exactly the same pace. Yeah. Somebody's going to heat up a little and have some moments. And by the way, it's incumbent upon that person to always kind of respect it too. Yeah. Like the yeah. thing about Jimmy is Jimmy got wild. I mean, he's hosted the Oscars three times. And I met yeah. him. He was the sports guy on the local radio station. But 
Jimmy also always respected my ability. So it was never like he was like, oh, I'm this guy and you're that guy. Right. He just thought, I'm that guy and you're that guy. I'm just hosting, you know, the Oscars. Yeah. So, but really, it, it's really destructive to try to bring your ego into, Oof, into show business. Yes. You just have Oof. to go, look, this guy was nobody when I got in the business and now he's playing out these, these big venues and stuff and good for him. Yeah. That's, it sets yeah. Up. And, and if anything, you can go, I'd like to be playing those bigger venues. Uh, how could I do that? Or maybe he's inspired me to work harder right. at it or whatever it is. That's that, a good it, sort of lesson for life generally. Yes, anything else is super destructive, super distracting, uh, counterproductive, and always ends up in some negative negative spot somewhere. Yeah. Perfect. Oh my God. This Ooh. is fucking phenomenal. So excited. I'm excited Ooh, too. Yeah. Oh, well, at least I was when I thought it was called Chilean sea bass. <laughs> it sounded fancy. No, <laughs> now no, I no. found out it was called felch fish, I think you guys <laughs> said it was fish? called. Yeah. Wow, that, that looks pretty? magnificent. Yeah. Wild. 425 for like 30 minutes, and it's fucking perfect. It flakes off. Gentlemen. Wow. wow. Here, let me give you a better one, Drew, so you don't all oh, look at that. Beautiful. Wow. And Thank then here, Stace, you can shoot this one if you want. I didn't put, like, I didn't oversalt it. I never oversalt because I fucking put salt on everything. So if I go by my taste, we're fucked. <laughs> oh, okay. But, oh. It's beautiful, right? It looks fucking great, right? So, but the real name of this is Nicaraguan Jizz Fish. <laughs> is that what it is? Oh, my God, you were so right about the, the lemon. The lemon. The lemon pepper so is so good on it, right? Yep. Mmm. That is delicious. Oh, my God. Mm. I'm dying to taste the spinach. I've never had a spinach with the feta. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, shit. Wow. Yeah, here, if you need salt, I put a little salt on it. Oh, salt on what? The fish or the feta? I put a set on salt on the, the spinach. On the spinach and the feta. Holy shit. Wow. This is so good. It flakes right off. Yeah. Mm. And this is what's the, the butcher's name? Eswin. Eswin? Yeah. He's. No mm. bullshit. This is really good. This is a, a oily fish. It's really good for uh, keto. So here's my problem with the whole keto and the whole yeah. this whole new world order. Yeah. Madison Avenue and Procter and Gamble and like Big Mayo has like figured Big this it's figured this shit out fast, right? right? Of course. And so you go to the supermarkets like, oh, it's mayonnaise, but it doesn't have safflower oil. It has avocado oil in it because right. there's a big picture of an avocado. And then you get it home and you turn around, it's safflower oil, avocado oil. And you're like, yeah. oh, okay. Yeah. They fucked us. Like, this happens at my house. Like, it happens all the time. You're like, oh, this is cauliflower pizza. This yeah. is the, the dough pizza is, is pretty fucking legit. It's cauliflower. It's all cauliflower. And then you turn, you get it home, it's like corn paste and potato powder right. like on the, and it's like right. it's not thank you it's not of course. cauliflower you know what i mean right. and it's like we're gonna have to have some kind of sanctioning body for this shit because yep. you're buying your shit every time someone has a half decent tortilla chip like it's, yeah. a, it's a keto it's a veggie no. you turn it on, it's like yam powder and yeah. whatever it's it's there's it's no, almost all bullshit. That's, that's the rub the on that, keto snacks. Yeah. Right. Because they say keto snack, and then you go, cool. And it says two net carbs up front, and then you turn around, 18 carbs in the package. Anytime they say net, you're getting scammed. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah, anytime. And yeah, then there, it, there's no real hack. Uh, first of all, the word hack, I want to get rid of. That drives me insane. Oh, right. Me too. That's what I get oh. called all the time. No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, biohack. And the reality is... It's like one time I said to a nutritionist, oh, I was Vinnie Tortorich, our friend, I said, um, my wife wants a breakfast bar. She does a breakfast bar. Is, I, and I, I got all the money in the world. What, give me a breakfast bar that she can eat as a good bread, like it's good for her. Because yeah. all of them was like s'mores breakfast <laughs> bar by Nestle. And first off, who are all the dumb fucks who buy yeah. this thing? Well. It's like, there's a picture of marshmallows on it, you know. It's like, come on. You They're can't. selling to my wife's family. Yeah, you cannot <laughs> think my that's a. My wife's family's like, no, no, these are good, and they got marshmallows. These are protein <laughs> bars, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, Canoe, it's uh, one of the food groups, you know. <laughs> so, 
I go, is there one bar, like a protein breakfast bar, that I could buy that is that you would approve? And he's like, oh, yeah, there's one. There's one that's going to... It's buffalo meat. It's literally just <laughs> buffalo meat. And I was like, oh, no free lunch. I thought it was something right. with peanut butter, something with carob or something. No. No. It's buffalo meat with little pieces of, like, cranberry in it. Yeah. But they died, too, that. back then. Like, the Native Americans... Their diet might have been healthy, but, well, I guess they didn't die from... What? They died from smallpox. Well, we got here. And they killed yeah. each other, I mean. Yeah, you got to be careful what Native American book you read. Because, like, especially... I read one that Rogan recommended, The House on the Rising Moon or something. And I was like, I was like, man, I came out thinking the Indians were dicks. <laughs> and then someone was like, how old was the guy that wrote it? And I go, he was like 80, and they're like, Yeah. You got to check your source. His wife I was didn't killed by many slaves. Well, Native yeah. Americans, so many slaves. And they were horrible to them. They were. Who was great? You know. Well, they, I just listened to a podcast about this lady who came over from England for religious freedom. And then they, in Boston or wherever, Mayflower. And then they like, yo, you're too fucked up for us. We sent you to the, sent them out. And then the Native Americans killed her whole family yeah. and then grabbed her daughter, but then raised her, their daughter like their own. She had red hair. And they were fucking, they were like, Fire crotch. <laughs> <laughs> well, Wait, isn't that Lindsay Lohan? <laughs> Lindsay Lohan got a bad rap. I will tell you that. You probably knew her. You guys probably met her, right? I knew her dad. No, did we ever interview? No. I don't think we ever interviewed her. Never. I don't know how that happened. Who's your best interview you guys ever had? Like most. Like where you go, oh, that was like fucking epic. That was like probably the fucking, like I've done a few interviews when I was on television when I did the X show. Slash was by far my best interview I ever Slash did. Slash is a great yeah, guy. I love Slash. Yeah, he, was, he was... There, there are... I would... I would. Sug I bet Adam's going to say, and you tell me if this is true or not, that we have people we just... They're just great people. That Slash right. would be definitely in there. But oftentimes the people that were like big gets, not not so much. You know? Yeah. <laughs> they, but, yeah. they sort of misbehave. No, no, they no. It'd be late. Just in no particular order, because it's just it's all who fuzzy memories. But yeah. I remember Rod Stewart was fun. I, 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 you I remember what Rod I Stewart? I barely said? remember it. Uncircumcised. Yeah. Yeah. It makes sense, you know. It makes total sense. Um, but it, yeah, uh, yeah. I remember that one. I mean, we talked to everybody, and we also. So here's the weird thing about you know memories, and the business, is. We talked to a lot of people before they were people. Right. They yep. were like, oh, remember Ryan Reynolds? You and like people that go like I go, We had Ryan Reynolds, two two guys I, a girl. I, like, I haven't interviewed Ryan. Ryan Reynolds. Oh, you interviewed yeah. Ryan Reynolds, but he was on two guys a girl in the pizza place and you didn't yeah. give a shit. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. And by the way, did you see the Geo had posted a classic love line. This guy collects all over love line. That you were on the set of Two Guys a Girl. Pizza? I was a guest star. I, that's, I didn't remember that at all. That show was funny as shit. Yeah, I was. I played Adam Carolla, <laughs> <laughs> but I was. I was on. I was on. We do all those shows, right? We did. We were on Leah Remini's show, Fired we're, Up. We were on Dawson's Creek. We were on Dawson's Creek. Yeah. Really? Oh yeah. But you, you, you meet. So on da Dawson's Creek, a perfect yeah. example. Yeah. Uh, what's your name? Which one? Um, the one. Oh yeah, the one that married to Tom. Tom. Oh, uh, Amy. Amy nope, Winehouse. Nope. Katie Moss. Katie. Katie. Katie Moore. Katie, Katie Haas. Katie. Katie Holmes. Katie Holmes. Katie Holmes. Katie Holmes. Right. That's no, what I said. No, this is my point. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the one who's acclaimed actress who was just in The Fablemans and Joanne what? Williams. Michelle Williams. Michelle Williams. Michelle Williams. Michelle Williams. Michelle Williams. All right, Michelle Williams. Hollywood A-list. I don't know who she is. She's. Gets nominated for an Academy Award. She's uh, yeah. Pete Tozer's still alive? No, she had. Oh, had a, had a kid, yeah. She she gets a nom she gets nominated. Yeah. Every year, she was acting with us, but she was the, you know, fourth yeah. tire Third on, fourth thing, on yeah. Dawson's Creek. So yeah. it's like I don't know who you are. Oh, but although I although she was lovely, I remember she came on the show that night with us at like two in the morning or something. Remember? But we if somebody said. If I was watching the Academy Awards and she'd won an Academy Award and someone said, have you ever interviewed that person? I'd go, fuck no. She would just like, why would she talk to me? And then they'd go, she did do your show and you did interview her. We have a lot of that. We forget. You guys you guys, Just said, like I don't remember that drive by my old house with you. Yeah. <laughs> I hit the, my favorite story, though, on somebody not being somebody yet was Heather Graham. That's the best story ever. What? 
Oh, Heather Graham. Yeah. Oh, we'll tell, we'll she tell, is we'll, fucking we'll, gorgeous. We'll, we'll, hang on. She was somebody. Not, not like she became. Not at all. Wait, what happened? Because remember you were, you were like... Drew fucked her in the parking lot. What was that? <laughs> <laughs> no, he goes... Hey, we had, no, we, it, this, this isn't a story of Heather Graham being someone and being known. This is a movie. Yeah. Heather Graham came on our show to plug something. A movie, you know... With you two other actors or something. Yeah, yeah. Never, maybe you don't I didn't remember who they were. I can't remember who they were. And later on... Just because I was running out of shit to talk to her about, I was like, and he would do this. So what? What do you got coming up? What's What's down the road? You got other projects or whatever? And she goes, she goes. Uh, I am in this movie. It's coming out in you know six months called Boogie Nights. And I was like, Boogie Nights? That's a w- stupid yeah. name for a movie. And she yeah. goes, I play Roller Girl. And I was like, Roller Girl. <laughs> yeah, literally. And, and I was like. Uh, who else is in it? She's like Burt Reynolds, who just got done doing like <laughs> Cop and a Half, yeah. and, you know, Smoking the Band at 19, like Burt Reynolds, you know what I mean? And, uh, you know, Marky Mark from the Funky Bunch, <laughs> and like, I was what? like, listen, Roller Girl, I gotta talk to your agent, you know? Literally, he goes, who's representing you? What are you doing? What are you doing? You seem like a talented girl, you been been looking. Marky Mark and Burt out, you know, Reynolds over there, Boogie Nights, like what the kind of he, he went on is, about it, like what the hell? Oh, like young lady, like, this is one of my favorite moves of all time. <laughs> and she didn't defend it <laughs> at all. Shit, at she all. was like, she, she just, was apologizing. Like, she like just sat kinda... there and hung her head. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they were like roller girl. Oh my god! Oh. The porn industry of the seventies. <laughs> Honey, you need a new agent. <laughs> and Mark Wahlberg, you yeah. know, nineteen ninety-seven or yeah. whatever. It was, he you know? has made. A crazy, like when you look at like, okay, who's had a crazier transformation of a career, Mark Wahlberg or Steve-O? Mm. Mark Wahlberg. I mean, Steve-O, I mean, Steve-O's a transfer. I'm going to say, I mean, he, I'm going to say Bruce yeah. Jenner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. In terms of performers, uh, yeah. they've Good really point. crossed over. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. We, yeah. Did, we did an episode of The Cabin with uh, Caitlin. Uh, we were doing this axe throwing thing. Oh, yeah, I remember that. And I had said I could throw an axe between my legs. And so I took an axe and I went like this and it went up over my shoulder and came down right in front of her and landed on the floor. Oh. And for a lack of better terms, she broke out pretty fucking hard. Oh, really? <laughs> she was like, what the fuck? And I was like, hey, Caitlin. And then, and then we started competing. She got really competitive. There's, oh, yeah. The champion well, in her is not, I mean, yeah. did not transition. Yeah. The you, champion's still there. Yeah. You want to know who can? Or rather, the champion must have transitioned. Oh, whatever. What? You want to know who can throw an axe between their legs? Number one through 20 in my giant hawk <laughs> national competition. There's no way those guys could pull that off. Segura and I did a bit on Two Bears. We were, we were like, yo, use it. I want to. We want to know your big dick problems because we think it would be great to have a big dick. Send in your hashtag big dick problems, and they were so sad. Yeah, listen, Ooh. way way more complaints about too big than too little on Loveline over yeah. the years. Would you yeah, say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That but was I, that was a much more like it's. What are you gonna do? I mean, it's like, it's, yeah, yeah. We sort of give them some gentle advice, and mm. I remember playing a just you know as long as we're on huge cocks. <laughs> Um, we played a celebrity <laughs> softball game, me and Jimmy and Kevin from Kevin and Bean and yeah. all that way back in the day. And it just had, you know, celebrity somewhere, charity, something. And the actor who played first base on Major League, the big, he played. The black dude, Jabu? Yeah. Yeah, Jabu? yeah that, that guy. We hit the showers after the, after the game. You didn't want to stand too close to that <laughs> guy. Like, I, I remember, Yeah. That was oh. big. I remember that clearly. That was big. <laughs> but yes. you're right. So, <coughs> well, let's 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 see if we can break down the game film. Oh, okay. God, the name of this episode is going to be Big Dick. Big Dick's galore. Big Dick. Like we all want the big dick, Cologne but then all the guys with the big dick are like, oh, you don't get it. It's so hard to yeah. travel. <laughs> so, I gotta, you know. Like I can't wear certain clothes. Yeah, it's like most women can't. We can't have intercourse in a normal they get way. She gets scared or whatever. Would you say that it's almost the same equivalent with women and big tits? Oh, 
Because yes. women go, look at that rack, or guys want or whatever, and the women are like, you don't get, I can't jog, I can't buy outfits yeah. that you guys can, you guys can all go to the fucking hot yoga class and you're whatever, I can't. Yeah. So it was a lot of like, I can't do this, yeah. everyone's staring at my tits all. But say, like, it's, it's kind of similar, it's, it's similar. Sort of equivalent yeah. to you want this, you say you want it, but do you really want it? I, I've seen chicks with like Lindsay Pellis, you know her? Uh -huh. Oh my God. Okay, it's it's worth pulling up a picture. Where's my phone? I got a phone. She is What's like that? she's you... gorgeous, but she has a big rack of tits. I mean, I mean that. <laughs> oh, hold on, I gotta go beat off. <laughs> <laughs> she is. How do you spell it? What she do? L A S uh, just takes pictures of herself. Oh. I mean, I'm sure there's more to it than Lindsay? that. Lindsay. Lindsay Pellis, yeah. P E L. Yeah, just came up. There it is, the Instagram. Do you see her? Oh yeah, hold on. Here, take, wow. it, take it with you. Oh, okay. right, she's she's uh, got a. Hang on, I'll sh I'll show you the fucking picture that this makes you think Dan Blazarian's a fucking genius. Mm. Lindsay Pellis running. <laughs> By the way, it's so brilliant. It's simple. Yeah, it's like uh, you guys are the trampolines. Wow. It looks like it hurts. It looks like it hurts. I don't need this soundtrack under every facet of life. I <laughs> prefer, prefer some classical here. But yeah, I get it. All right, noted. Pretty fucking great. It's in the spank bag. Uh, it's, it's filed. Noted. No, yeah, yeah it's in the bag and tagged. Bag. It's in the spank bag. Um, Gentlemen, this was a fantastic fucking evening. So fun. I have to tell you this, and I know I, I know both of you know this. It is the highlight of my life that in my career I can call you guys even peers at all because I fucking have been looking. I've looked up to you guys my entire fucking career. I don't know how you feel about Corolla, but you and I are friends. Wow. I know, but no, but still. When I first did Love Line, I, we, I found the machine. You found I the discovered machine. that story. And the fact that I like, made that him come was back and tell it again the next night. Like, I did. Come back I was tomorrow. doing guest host on Love Line. They were looking for a get. They were looking for a host, and I, I wasn't in the running, but I was just filling in. And someone called up and said, "Why don't you tell the story about the time you robbed your class in Russia?" Mm -hmm. And he was like, "Huh?" I was like, "Oh yeah, I, I robbed a train in Russia." And he was like, "What?" I was like, yeah, "We were with the Russian mafia. It's a long story." I He's said, like, "Tell, tell it. it." So I tell it. And it does really well. I was dying. I get off radio, and then I get a call the next morning. Like, can you do Love Line again? Oh, I thought of it after the fact. Yeah, or, it no, yeah you, it was definitely. Oh, my you might idea. have said it on there. You, you need to come back tomorrow and tell that story. That's again. what I think I did. Yeah, it's my and so I came back the next night. I told the story again, and he said, "Then he goes, that is your movie. That is your movie. Wow. You yeah. need to make that as your movie. Don't ever forget that." And I literally forgot was, about I it. I was like, I was like, whatever. <laughs> I was like, that's not true. And I tell it a couple more times, literally like maybe five more times in my career. And it was DJs who had heard, who were fans of Love Line. Uh -huh. I go to Cowhead and he goes, I heard, I heard oh, you on Love yeah. Line, you got to tell the story. Uh, I do it to Elliot in the morning, I heard you on Love Line, you got to tell the story. I went to all these places, you got to tell the story. So I tell it a couple more places. And then it gets kind of good. I do it WDVE yeah. and it gets kind of good. And then I did it on Rogan. And when I did it on Rogan, it was like a game changer. It like changed my life, my name. No one called me Bert anymore. They called me The Machine. And it was like, it completely it changed my life for the better, way for the better. Thanks. Cheers, 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 pleasure. Cheers. Thank, Thank you, you so much for doing this. Did yeah, you enjoy the really meal? Good. Oh, so good. Beyond, like fucking really, really great. right. And yeah. so easy. I hit it out of the park. You did. Mm -hmm. Great episode. Thank you so much, everybody. This episode was brought to you by The Machine.